On February 28th, 1873, the town of Apex was incorporated. And that's when it all began. In 1911, there was a big fire downtown. Uh, the whole downtown area pretty much burned down, and that is because there was no fire department in existence in Apex at that time. So the only way people could know about it was the train was coming through, and the conductor just kept blowing the whistle, letting everybody know that downtown was on fire. Prior to the starting of the Apex Volunteer Fire Department, the fire protection was, let's say, spotty at best. It was just local members of the community that pitched in to help whenever the need arised. But at some point, especially when a man's barn burned down that was very important to the town, several men got together and decided that something had to be done. So in 1939, the Apex Volunteer Fire Department was chartered by 19 local businessmen. One of them was my grandfather, Ollie Yates Sr. They were able to start this department with a dump truck that they were able to secure from a local businessman. And looking back, this was really the birth of a long-standing relationship between the town and the Apex Volunteer Fire Department. The town allowed them to store the truck at, the, at that time in their town hall, which is now the Halley Cultural Arts Center. So as the department was growing, the members wanted somewhere they could be proud of to keep their fire trucks. So they started construction on a station on Salem Street that was three bays and still stands today. In 1952, the Rural Department was established, which was a first for Wake County. The Rural Fire Department focused mainly on fire protection for outside the corporate limits, such as farmland, tobacco barns, house fires, brush fires, things of that nature. This included this side of Wake County and is part of Chatham County as well. Being the first department to receive county funds, the Apex Volunteer Fire Department in the 50s added Rural Services Incorporated to their name to show that they were now protecting areas outside of the city limits of Apex. At this time, they still had the trucks the town had provided from 39 up until the 50s. But with this new funding available, they were able to purchase county trucks and house them in the same area. In 1962, the Volunteer Fire Department placed the first mobile radios in service. So fast forward to 1988 when I joined the fire department, the technological advances have not slowed down at all. Uh, when I joined, we were given pagers that you wore on your belt. You could were notified of fire calls when you were out in the public at the grocery store, outside at your home. When the alarm went off out in the back of the fire station, you could hear it all over town because there wasn't as much traffic and noise as it is around here now. We had pagers. When the pagers go off, that siren go, it was so loud within a mile radius, you can hear it. Our radio system has just become so much better. We could talk, we were able to track each other in our radio systems if we had those capabilities. The technology has just continued to grow since 1980s when I got in. Fireman's Day was a big deal for Apex. People came from everywhere to see all the fire trucks. We had fire trucks that come from all over the county. I think some even come from outside the county. A lot of times when we had the Farmer's Day Parade, we would do the barbecue dinners and things of that nature. The barbecue dinners were a, a fundraiser for the fire department. Well, the fundraiser Apex Fire Department, it was just, just like a brotherhood for the uh, people in the community. They know we had the chicken and barbecue, okay? Everybody was working together. Uh, the community, they also, they knew, they always like, anything we can do to help, you know? We had even people would want to come in and volunteer to help us. And when you start doing that, the community see that, hey, the fire department is working together as a team, you know. The fundraiser got bigger, um, cause they know it was coming. We prepared ourselves. Friday night was the spaghetti night, you know, and then Saturday was the chicken and barbecue. We had so many people. So one time we run out of food. We sold everything. You get 40, 50, firefighters together and working as a team, you could ask for nothing else better. One way the community really rose up for the fire department was the fire bells. Fire bells consisted of uh, some of the firemen's wives, girlfriends, sisters or whatever, but they always were backing us as far as moral support, 
A lot of them were at the fires when we were there, and uh, especially fires that we're going to be at for a long time. Another part of the fire bells, which was very important to us, was as we're on an extended call or fighting house fire, um, we would get exhausted. So we had an area called rehab area, and the fire bells would have uh, water coolers set up uh, and things like that, and they would help the firefighters by making sure they sit down, relax, and uh, they would give us a lot of support. I joined the uh, Apex Volunteer Fire Department in uh, 1989, and uh, we were able to keep up with the calls that were coming in, with the equipment that we have, the number of volunteers we had, we had 50 to 70 volunteers on roster. And then over the course of the next few years, uh, we noticed an increase in our call volume. And the call volume increase was due to more and more people moving to Apex. And there were so many calls run during the day that sometimes they couldn't get all the calls run out because they had called other departments to come and help us. So we had a meeting one night and we talked about it and said, well, we need anybody that wants to volunteer wants to be a paid fireman. In 92, I was hired as a paid fireman from eight to five, Monday through Friday. So we started off with a part-time paid staff, eight to five during the daytime. Call volume kept increasing, people kept moving in. Next thing you know, we had to go with a full-time paid staff, just a man station one, and then it was 24 hour coverage supplemented by uh, the volunteers. So we, we both worked together as a team for quite a few years. In 1998, the town of Apex and the Apex Volunteer Fire Department entered into a consolidation agreement. The first part of this agreement was the career staff becoming town employees. And the Apex Volunteer Fire Department operated all of the equipment and provided all the equipment for us to operate. The merger took place because the volunteer department could not keep up with the number of calls. To go along with it, I believe that they wanted a little bit more control of the money and assets that were um, they were putting into the department. So there was some tension between the two groups. There was a little bit of animosity between the volunteers in the town because of the way the equipment was operated, who was providing what, whose responsibility was this, whose responsibility was that. What made it a little bit easier, I feel like, was all of the career staff had come from being the volunteers. So we kind of saw both sides of the coin and we tried to make the best out of it that we could. No matter the amount of animosity we might have had, we never let the level of service that we provided to the community falter. In 1993, Bill Stevenson became the first paid fire chief of the department. When I was trained under Bill Stevenson as a fire chief, we trained from every Monday night, heavy training, from 7.30 to maybe 9.30. And as a paid firefighter, we, we trained from 12 to 2. Training was so important. When I first joined in 1997, um, I mean, I quickly realized that it was all about the training. Uh, there was so much to learn. The certification programs were hundreds of hours each, and so volunteers were nights and weekends, um, you know, in classes, driving all over the county to get the training that you needed. Um, and really the important thing to note is that the fire doesn't care whether you're paid or volunteer. It can hurt or kill you regardless, so that's why being held to the same high level of standard between paid and volunteer is so important. Yeah, I sort of, when we train, I'm like, I just got tired of like, I'm done, you know, like, training, 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 training. And he was, he pushed it to the limit. I got mad at him one time. I said, well, I ain't doing it no more. I'm done. He like, you still want to be a fireman? I said, yes, sir. Well, you're no different than nobody else. He's going to train, he's going to train, he's going to train. And I said, Phew. Chief, you was right. 
when we were training together, it really created a bond because you were in some difficult situations. You were hot, you were sweaty, you were lifting heavy things and doing difficult things. And I mean, we were all in it together. So it, it, it built a camaraderie like I've never had in any other job. In October of 1997, we opened Station 2 in our rural area. It's in the New Hill community. They opened that station because we had a growth going that direction and we had a Sharon Harris nuclear power plant in that direction. And it took about nine to 10 minutes for any truck from town to get out there. So we needed a more rapid response in that area. When we opened Station 2, there was some concern because we didn't have a lot of volunteers that lived in that area. So we kind of did a recruitment drive for that district and got some volunteers and had to put them through some rapid training to have them ready to respond in that area. When we opened Station 2, nothing really changed in the way we operate other than we were able to get to uh, the scene of a fire quicker. Uh, fire is fire, whether it's in town or whether it's in our rural area, it's all the same. We still operate the same. It's just a little bit different mentality as far as needing a tanker versus needing an engine or a ladder. In 1997, I think it was in the spring, uh, Yamaha donated two jet skis and CPNL at the time donated a boat to the fire department and that's what started our dive team. So it was our, our water rescue team and the, uh, the members at that time were trained in open water and rescue diving. Without that, we would have to rely on resources from around the county, which, of which there weren't that many at that time. And so it was really important for us to have that team so that we could quickly respond um, to water rescue incidents. Both volunteer and paid members all went through the same training. It was basic open water, advanced open water, rescue diver. Apex was growing so fast at that time, and so it wasn't sufficient to just focus on fire anymore. So in 2004, uh, we formed our Urban Search and Rescue, or USAR team, and so um, that we, we got, again, a bunch of equipment that was donated to us, but this involved structural collapse, trench rescue. I think we eventually started up swift water training, and all of those, as Apex grew, the population grew, the buildings um, and construction were exploding. We needed all of that to be able to better serve the community. After 1998, when we became town employees, the town had a vested interest in the fire department, so they started buying some equipment and started construction of a station three on Hunter Street as part of giving back to what the volunteers were providing as well and uh, to supplement the equipment that we had. In 2002, the town of Apex Board of Commissioners and the Apex Volunteer Fire Department Board of Directors agreed to a complete consolidation of the town of Apex taking over absorbing all assets and liabilities that Apex Volunteer Fire Department had. In 2009, the department continued to grow and we built our fire station four, which is on East William Street near US-1. To put that station in service, we had to hire people. So the department had its very first uh, cadet academy then, which meant you could be hired with no experience as a firefighter and we give you everything you need. Station four cannot open without the first ever cadet academy. So with 15 people, that spread people out enough to where that station was open. So in 2019, the fire department began building our fire station five at the corner of Kelly Road and Apex Barbecue Road. Uh, we had an opportunity to have another cadet academy again. Uh, our theme has always been to hire the best, to make them the best firefighters we can have. So with station six opening in 2023, from being here before and only seeing station one, big deal for me. Um, in this process of watching the progression of when I started, there was 20 some people here on the full-time roster. Now we have over 100. We have also diversified the fire department. Uh, a lot of stuff has happened. So as a captain, now here with the Apex Fire Department and watching the next generation and actually having a front row seat to watch all the different smiles and faces that come through, I'm really excited about seeing this and watching the people go through what I went through when I first started. We do this job because we love our town and love to serve the town and make a difference.